Now let's talk about file storage. As we discussed before, Azure Storage Account have four types of uh, storage. Uh, we already discussed blob, and we already mentioned the queue, queue storage and the table storage uh, is beyond the scope of this course, So, which leads us to file storage. Um, file storage, um, in all the uh, practical uh, sense, is just a file server, another file server sitting on top of uh, uh, the Azure infrastructure. So you will have a bunch of files all from the uh, in this chart from right to left. Right? Starting with file, you have a lot of files, and uh, all these files are properly placed into some kind of a folder structure or directory store structure. And this, all these directories will uh, go to a certain file share. And this file share, you can understand that as a file server share. So when you define a server in your local um, IT system, right, um, in all enterprise IT system, you define a server, you install a file sharing system there, and you are sharing a block of your storage, a certain root directory um, to your enterprise so that your users can connect to this root directory or certain folder inside. This is exactly what's happening here. Uh, you define a file share, you are basically defining um, a namespace where you have folders and the file inside those folders. And uh, you, can access, you can grant access to your users the same way as you see in the block storage side, uh, either through some kind of uh, role-based um, uh, authentication authorization uh, system that you grant someone, some person, certain access, or you use the access key or SAS, the uh, uh, shared uh, shared also, uh, uh, shared access signature. And based on all these tokens or role assignment, uh, users will be able to access the file share, and uh, you can have multiple virtual machines connecting to the same uh, same file share. Um, here you can use a virtual machine to map uh, an address, a, a folder, or a drive to the file share or a certain folder inside the file share. Then once you make modification to that file, uh, all other users accessing the same share will see the change. So exactly what a file share to is supposed to do. And the fair share, file share have a pretty much is a similar way uh, as a blob uh, storage. It also have uh, it also can be uniquely identified by a URL. The URL starts with a storage account name dot something something and uh, slash by file share name slash by the folder directory uh, structure and finally by the file name. So this is the, how you will identify it. How you access that, like we said, uh, robust, uh, robust, robust access, you grant someone a certain privilege to a certain folder, or use the SAS, uh, a shared access signature or access key. The very powerful side of file storage or file share is that it can sync up with on-premise file server. Usually, what um, no matter how useful it is, uh, file share is still residing in Azure Data Center and uh, probably far away from you, uh, your office. And in most enterprise, in order to speed up uh, the network performance, there will be a caching service, a file a file server that is actually a cache in the corporate office. So when you try to access uh, that file, you are actually first accessing the cache in your file server. Only when the cache is not available in uh, on-prem, then the file server will go to the remote file storage to get the actual file. Um, with that, Azure File Share can serve this purpose of being the remote file share and connecting to your uh, uh, your cached on-prem file server, it's useful. Can it can first of all use as a file repository, right? Because not all files are needed uh, all the time. Only a small portion, maybe one percent or even less, files are usually needed every day. So 
the majority of those can be saved in Azure, which reduces a lot of cost because the local file server is always more expensive than cloud file server. So this serves as the bulk of the storage, the workhorse for storage, and your cache will, uh, your cache server, your on-premise uh, on uh, cache will help you improve performance. And the second one of this is it can also serve as a backup choice. You can have uh, all the documents still uh, accessible, and the files will be up, uh, backed up inside Azure. And if uh, anything wrong with your on-prem network or machine, you still have the Azure files there. And Azure it, by itself it provides its own backup policy to make the file share resilient, so that uh, the uh, any Azure issue will not impact the consistency and integrity of the file share. Of course, if a file share in this setup, if your uh, Azure file share failed, uh, you still have the cache, right? You have the most cache, and uh, you can ask Azure to back up, to restore your backups. And uh, finally, it can also use to serve as a central hub of enterprise file system. It's not surprising that you have a distributed team. You have uh, some people in US, some people in uh, Europe, some people in India. Uh, this is a common setup, right? So what if all these people need to access uh, a different, uh, uh, same machine, same server, same file, right? So this one, uh, file storage, uh, Azure Fashure can serve as a central hub. For example, uh, just uh, my, me personally, um, my company have also have a European uh, work branch. And uh, there's also a, another team working in India. So we constantly have a meeting with each other and uh, the, the, the meeting notes and some artif artifacts generated from that file, from that, those meetings, has to be stored in a place where all the, uh, all the teams, global teams, can access. If uh, this, this uh, stores in some, uh, uh, some on-prem data center, it will be hard and slow for the other teams to access. But uh, storing that in file share and use certain caching mechanism to <clears throat> using some caching mechanism to uh, deliver that to different local uh, office will definitely be a wonderful solution for file sharing. And uh, finally, that's the one of the most common question people have. Uh, what's the difference between block storage and the file storage? Because the, after all, they look all like it's a file and a file, right? Even in blob, we claim it's a blob, but it still is a file. So let's see what's the advantage of each one. File storage, what's the advantage of this one? It's more convenient. It's more intuitive. We as a human being has uh, uh, who has been trained to get used to the file server, file systems, that's in Linux, in Unix, or in, in Windows. We, we are very used to it. We are very used to open up a file, look at the content, make modifications, all these things. These are idea, file storage is just the product of this thought. It just fits into this paradigm perfectly. So for business files, such as like a Word document, Excel spreadsheet, the file storage uh, is the perfect uh, place to store. Now, how about blob storage? The one and uh, I would uh, I would say the one and only advantage of blob storage is it's cheaper. It's cheaper and uh, it, it may not look like very cheap, probably like a five percent or ten percent cheaper. But if you time this by the amount of file, think about what is stored in blob. Blob is usually used to store um, those uh, machine oriented the the, the Automation or the machine oriented, uh, like machine learning for the machine learning service or artificial intelligence or like vast processing, uh, blob is used uh, to store files for these kind of things. Like uh, in uh, YouTube, uh, so many videos. Well, how should you store them? You don't want to store them as a file storage because it's expensive. It's more expensive for you utilizing blob given the amount. Uh, the volume of uh, YouTube uh, the videos, uh, any reduction in, in cost will have a significant impact on the total revenue, right? So it's blob storage is ideal for any large volumes. 
uh, of storage, such as data files. All uh, so think about like IoT. If you have uh, everybody wearing a smartwatch, the data volume generated, or all uh, cell phone call rec rec records, those data files, the media files, uh, like uh, image, everybody's picture. Uh, or, or like uh, YouTube videos, and then also uh, the cheaper side can get even cheaper by utilizing the archive uh, solution, right? So if there's a file requires long-term archiving, you don't see a point of uh, of uh, regularly putting that up and uh, make change to it. Then file require uh, requires long-term archiving uh, is ideal for blob storage. So basically, it's for large volumes, for long-term storage, that's for blob storage. But uh, for uh, relatively smaller volume and more human interactive operations, uh, that's for the, 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 that's choose file storage. But uh, as we as in this course, we are uh, data scientists and data engineers, and we have uh, we are processing data engineers, uh, engineering jobs. So we will use blob storage because it's a uh, machine facing, it's a um, data file, a large chunk of data file. In our project, we may not have a large file, but uh, eventually, this is what you are going to run into when you find your job. Okay. So the next thing we want to discuss is about accessing storage account. Accessing storage account. How do you access storage account? This includes both blob and file. There are three ways, at least, to accessing storage account. You can use a portal or a portal-like tool, like uh, Azure Storage uh, Storage Explorer. You can also use some script like PowerShell and the CLI. Also, you can use your own programming language to write your own code. Now, portal is easy, right? We already see how we do the um, uh, uh, creation and upload and the download and uh, delete. Uh, we didn't de demonstrate, but I did show you the the but buttons, right? The uh, download and delete button. Uh, so it's pretty intuitive, and you can foresee uh, foresee how to handle all these. Um, CLI PowerShell is somewhere in between between programming and code, uh, you, uh, programming code and the portal. It's uh, CLI PowerShell. These are Microsoft provided the scripts that we generally consider what we call the infrastructure as code. We will discuss about this later. Um, but the most intriguing is the programming code. Is uh, this is the most relevant to us because as uh, data, data engineers, we will constantly read and write and uh, basically um, uh, process the files, utilize, uh, read the file the, the data uh, inside file into uh, our uh, our machine learning framework. That's what we do day in and day out. So here is one example of how to access that. You will need to install Azure Package uh, Storage Blob, right? This is what you use to access the blob. And you also want to access uh, from your from your Jupyter Notebook or Python console utilizing four things the first thing is the URL that's how we uh, the first three actually are the components of a URL one URL is a storage account URL you have have the HTTPS storage account name dot blob dot core dot windows dot net then followed by a container and followed by blob name that's what we just discussed right this is how you would uh, identify any blob in the world you have the storage account name within uh, because storage account name is uh, unique, right? Then you have a container. Container name is unique in, within that uh, storage account. Then you have a blob name. That's how you identify uh, each and every blob. And then you have the credentials. There are multiple ways to use credentials. Here we use the access key. And you can also use other ways, right? Other approach. But uh, in our particular example, we use the access key. You will copy this from your storage accounts uh, access key tab, uh, paste it here. Then once you have all these uh, four information, you are able to identify the blob and you are able to provide the proof of uh, who you are. That's when you can download the content into this storage blob so it will be a blob client you download this and here this is what we mean by blob right by blob right this one is actually uh, you can do let's say it's, it's a csv right it's a csv it has the different roles of information but uh, to azure 
It's just one operation of reading all. It doesn't care whether this is CSV or what. It just gives you a blob, a bunch of uh, binary uh, contents, which is this file. And then once you get the file, you can do whatever you want. You can write this line by line. Uh, you can write this to one example uh, .csv and start to uh, process the CSV as you would do that in any data science class.